Hi guys, Bruno Luce here for JLB Productions. Thanks for joining us for this video. In this clip, what I'm going to show you is how to use the internal effects processor that's found on many modern mixers. As mixer design develops, you'll find that a lot of modern mixers, they have internal effects that are just as good as, if not better, than some of the older outboard effects and rack mount effects units. So it's worth giving these units a try, especially for live sound, where, where the quality of the effect is not absolutely critical. They're often more than enough. So let's have a look at these. Now the mixer that we're going to use for this video is a Mackie CFX12. Now, as you can see, in the master section of this mixer, it has a built-in effects processor. It says there, Emac Digital Stereo Effects Processor. These effects are found on many mixers, including many entry-level mixers that have the letters FX in their model name. And as I mentioned in the introduction, these effects, although they cannot compete with expensive rack mount units, they're often more than good enough for live sound. And the other thing is, they come free with a mixer. So why not give them a go? These units are typically set up as follows. You will have a knob or some way of choosing the effects. Now, they usually come with at least a dozen different effects. You can see here, this comes with a bunch of plate reverbs, some room and hall reverbs. It also comes with a bunch of delays, a chorus, flanger, a phaser, and so on. There will always be a way to route the effects to this processor and then to get the output of this processor into your main mix. And figuring that out is often the hardest thing when it comes to using these. So let's look at our mixer as a whole and work out how to do this. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've plugged the vocal mic into this channel here, okay? If you zoom in to the aux sen section of this channel, you can see that there are two separate effect sends. Now, Mackie, as you know, they put the aux sen section above the EQ. The reason being that you, once you adjust these, they're pretty much set, whereas you're probably adjusting the EQ continuously throughout the gig. As you can see, the first one is labeled FX1 EXT. Now, EXT stands for External Effects Send. The second one, EFX2, is labeled INT. That stands for Internal Effects Send. Internal being the internal processor over here. So if you want this channel to be able to access this processor, you need to turn that knob up. Okay, we'll turn this one down and you need to turn this up. Usually I turn it to unity gain and leave it there unless there's an overpowering reason to do otherwise. Now let's look at the effects processor itself. Now looking at the effects processor, you'll see that there's four knobs across the top. This is what they do on this particular mixer. Effects to send is basically the overall master send to this processor. So if you want your channel send to get into here, that needs to be turned up. Once again, I usually set it to the unity gain or 12 o'clock position and leave it there. This knob, as you can see, says to main mix. So if you want the effects from here to go to your main mix, you need to turn this up. You then have two knobs that allow you to send your effects to the monitors. Now the reason that they give you separate controls for this is that a lot of singers and musicians like to hear more reverb than would be appropriate in the front of house mix. So they give you separate controls for that. That's the knob that allows you to choose what effect you want. Let's set that to a, let's put it to medium hall for now. Below, you have variations on the theme. Wide, 
and bypass allows you to bypass the effects completely. All right, now let's see how this works. What has now happened is that I have connected the output of the mixer directly to the video camera so that you can hear what would be going to the front of house mix. As we mentioned, we have the channel send turned up over here. All right. We have turned up the send on our source channel. We have turned up effects to send, which is the send to this processor. And we have set our processor to a medium hall setting. The only thing that remains is to raise this knob. As I raise this knob, you'll be able to hear the hall reverb come in. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. If you want to change the reverb, let's say large hall, check one, two, check one, two. You'll also notice that the reverb at the moment is really, really short, okay? If I want, say, a longer reverb time, I can turn this up. Check one, two, check one, two. What about cathedral? Let's see how that sounds. Check one, two. Wow, that's a big space, isn't it? Let's check out some delays. Check, 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 check. Now, now with, with the, delays, the delays, the time, the time controls, controls the time the of the, time delay. the delay. Shorter, Shorter delay, delay, check, check. check. One, one, two, check, check. Longer delay, Longer delay. Check. check, check. One, two, one, two, and and really long, delay. really long delay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, um, I'll just bypass that so that it's not so distracting. The the differences between the delays have to do with the way in which the effect is regenerated. Check, check one, two, one, two. Delay, delay two. two. You can hear, you can hear more, delays. more delays. Check, check one, two, one, two, and check, and check one, one, two. 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 Bypass the effects unit once again. Chorus is, it sounds a little bit like two people uh, playing or singing together slightly out of tune. Set to chorus, check one, two, check one, two. Now again, if you want more chorus, you would turn that up. Flanging is a more extreme form of chorus. Check one, two, check one, two. Phaser, even more extreme. The wide switch makes it sound really wide. Check, one, two. Can you hear that? Without the wide switch, with the wide switch. In other words, the wide switch gives you a really, really big stereo image, and I suspect that half the audience won't be able to appreciate that. <laughs> so, as you can hear, these internal effects are really, really simple to use, and Sometimes they actually sound pretty decent. The trick is not overusing them. For live sound, if you can hear the effect, it's probably too much, okay? So let's say that I was using that whole reverb, all right? Now, I would say that in live sound, this is probably too much. So I would reduce that, check one, two, 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 that's probably how much I'd use for a singer. All right, obviously, every venue is different, and every venue has its own natural reverb. Now, as you can see here, I thought just for kicks and giggles, as my father used to say, we'd show you a different mixer. This is a Yamaha MG124CX. And in Singapore, at least, this is a really, really popular entry-level mixer. I know a lot of clubs, pubs, churches, and bands use the MG series of mixers. They're good value for money. And as you can see here, they also have a built-in effects section. So let's take a look at how you would set it up for one of these Yamaha MG series mixers. Now, to begin with, i just tell you what my setup is. As you can see, I have plugged a microphone into this channel. It is on. The MG series use the on as opposed to the mute protocol, so you need to switch the channel on. 
I've raised the channel fader, routed the channel to the stereo bus, and raised the master fader. And you, of course, are listening to the output from the mixer connected directly to the video camera. Now, as on the Mackie, you can see here within the channel section, just zoom in to let you see that a bit more easily. This mixer only has two aux sends, unlike the Mackie's four. You have one aux send here, which is suitable pre or post fader, usually for stage monitors, and you have the effect send. Now, the effect send in this case is fixed post fader, and it automatically routes to the internal effects engine, unless you route it otherwise. Okay. Now let's have a look at the effects section itself. As you can see, it has a program select knob, so it lets you select between various reverbs, choruses, so on and so forth, depending on what you want. It has a parameter knob, unlike the Mackie, which had, if you remember, it had two knobs to vary the parameter. This only has a single one. It has a knob for you to route the effects to your stage monitors. And this is the big difference. Below, it has a fader. Now, this is, in my opinion, a more versatile setup than with the Mackie. With the fader, you get all the benefits of returning an external effects unit to a channel. It also allows you to PFL and mute your effects as necessary. So, let's see how this effects engine works. Like on the Mackie, there is no effects master knob, right? As soon as you turn up the channel send, it's routed immediately to the effects engine. So all you have to do is turn up the channel send, turn on the channel for the effects, and bring up your fader. And there you can hear we have a reverb. Once again, adjusting the parameter knob will give you different settings. Let's have a look. So, shorter reverb. Longer reverb. This is Hall 2. And then you have Room 1, 2, and a series of, this is what they call stage. 7 is a plate reverb. And then you have 9. 9, nine is called Karaoke Echo. Minimum echo, maximum echo. As you can hear, this is actually a delay. Sometimes they will label, sometimes they will label a delay as echo because a lot of people don't know what a delay is. Um, 10 is a vocal echo. Check one, two. 11 is a chorus, more chorus and less chorus. 12 is also a chorus. I, I can't uh, really tell. I think it's a little bit less. 13 is a flanger. 14, phaser. 15 is something called auto wah. And <laughs> 16 is distortion. So presumably this is the Darth Vader setting. Yes, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> And thank goodness, back to one. One of the things that you'll notice about this reverb engine is that there is a pause as you change the presets. I'll just show that to you. So here we are on one. Check one, two, three, four, five. Now, as you can hear, there was a slight pause as I swapped to the second preset. Uh, apart from that, there's no real other differences between this and the Mackie. Just remember that in all cases, you have to route the signal to the effects processor, and they will give you some way of returning it to your mix, either with a knob, in the case of the Mackie, or in the case of this mixer, a fader. Well, that concludes our tutorial on built-in effects processors, also known as onboard effects units. 
Just remember that these units have come a long way in the last 10 or 15 years, whereas in the old days it used to be just maybe a spring or a plate reverb built directly into the mixer. Now with modern digital technology, you can have 24-bit effects on board, and as you can hear, you can have a whole suite of different effects from reverbs to delays to choruses to even making you sound like Darth Vader. So I do hope that you've learned from this. Don't discount onboard effects, especially for live sound, where the quality of the effect is maybe not quite as important as its cost effectiveness. Because remember, you can spend, you know, five hundred or a thousand dollars on an expensive outboard effects processor, which today you could probably buy yourself a nice amplifier or even a nice monitor speaker with. This is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.